There's a lot of privileges I get because of my uh, role with 100 Huntley Street. I meet some really remarkable people, but I very rarely meet a man with the stature of Mercury Morris. Oh, well, come on. <laughs> I Just got a regular you, guy I, from Pittsburgh. <laughs> well, I, I, I know that, but I, I, I watched you in, in the height of your career. I, you know, I, I was just a young guy. I guess you were too. And, yeah. and I was so impressed with your, um, your ability. Yeah, th those heydays with the, uh, with, the, with the Dolphins. I mean, you're, we're talking back in the, what, the Larry Zonka era, right? Uh, did you ever expect to be in a Super Bowl, let alone winning two in your experience? Well, actually, everything happened so fast. Yeah. Uh, I, I went to a team that really was bad when I first got there in 1969. Yeah. That was before the leagues merged in 1970. So we had a coach by the name of George Wilson. Yeah. And this guy, he, the first thing that came out of his mouth was, well, I'm hoping for a 7-7 seven and seven season. And I thought to myself, did I just hear this guy say it's okay to lose seven games? Yeah. Right. <laughs> this, is, this is why our motivation. Yeah. And I got up right after him and I said, I was a rookie yeah. in 1969 in yeah. Miami. Yeah. Uh, and I said, Coach, with all due respect, if we have 14 games to play, let's go 14-0. If we, do, if we have 13 games and we lose one, let's go for 13-1 and one, yeah. or 12-2. and two. But let us not hang out in the bounds of mediocrity. And they go, who the heck is this kid? <laughs> <laughs> but that we never reached mediocrity that year. No. We went 3-10-1. and one. Yeah. <laughs> Shula came in. Yeah. We changed coaches, but the team was transformed. Now the distinction between just becoming good and a transformation is that you you change exactly, not change yourself, but you transform yourself into what you need to be in order to get that job done. And Shula had a kind of a work ethic that allowed us to do that. And we went from 3-10 and 1 to 10 and 4 in the playoffs. And then the next year we went to the Super Bowl and we lost. Mm -hmm. And then and then the next year we went undefeated. And the next year we went back to back. Now that year that you went undefeated, it uh, it's still uh, iconic in NFL history. Uh, was there a lot of pressure on you those last few games to finish an unblemished year? Well, you know what? Today you would think that, yeah. but because it had never happened before, yeah. we were underdogs in the Super Bowl right. after we had won 16 huh. games in a row because that was a territory that nobody knew of. Hmm. So when we, by the time we started, we got our butts beat. And you have to understand that when we lost in, in Super Bowl VI, uh, that, that, no, no there's, there, I think there's Super Bowl 46 now or something mm. like that. When we lost in Super Bowl 6, the Dallas Cowboys were the first team to lose in the Super Bowl because they lost in Super Bowl 5 to come back and win mm. in Super Bowl 6. The, that was the first team. The last team to lose in the Super Bowl and then come back and win was us. <laughs> and that tells you. Wow. But we started out that year. Shula made us come back. And the first thing he did was made us watch the game that we got our butts beat in. Right. And then he turns off the projector, he says, now, you see how sick you feel now? You see how sick and sorry you feel? Well, just think of how sick and sorry you're gonna be if you don't go back and redeem yourselves for what you did last year. Right. Then he said, I forgot to tell you, it was just as much my fault as yours because you can't be world's champions unless you win all three seasons. The regular season, and then the playoff season, and then the Super Bowl. So if you're good enough, your season boils down to one game. And that's the game you got. Now, when you get a, a motivational sp uh, speech like that from your coach. Uh, it actually goes with you onto the field. You remember oh, yeah. what he said? To a man, we were dedicated yeah. to go and do just that. It wasn't about being good. Now today, they want to do it because uh, that's a prowess. Yeah. Then it was making it uh, uh, up for a mistake that we'd been made. So we had our report cards in our back pockets yeah. every week from the year before. So there was no forwardness of, gee, we might be doing something great. We're still trying to get over the F we got from the year before. And, and when we lost in Super Bowl VI. So the motivation for us was to go out and produce on, in practice a product that we could put out on the field on Sunday so that we knew it didn't matter who we were playing, it only mattered how we prepared for that next team. When you look at the NFL today, and how many years is it since you played? Oh, geez, oh man, 30 years. 30 years? years. Uh, what what uh, differences do you see in the game? Uh, the difference is team yeah. and individuals. Uh, and, and that's why I, I believe it, that nobody will do this again. It's, yeah. it's a possibility, yeah. but the probability is like 4,000 to 1. Yeah. That team that year, we were number one in offense, number one in defense, number one in special teams, fewest giveaways, most takeaways, least penalized, scored the most points, gave up the least, 
broke the rushing record that year, falling 40 yards short of 3,000 yards rushing in a 14-game season. 2,000-yard rushers, first time in history, lost our starting quarterback for 11 weeks, and a guy who replaced him was throwing touchdown passes back in 1957 when I was 10. <laughs> Earl Morrill. Earl Morrill, Yes, right. and, that, and it was just a, a tremendous team effort where nobody thought about themselves. It was only about the object of going out there and redeeming ourselves for what happened. Because redemption is a gigantic thing. <laughs> no, no kidding. Now, what about all this talk lately about old football players and uh, brain injuries? Uh, is this something that you're aware of in some of your uh, fellow team yes, players? Is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And, and, and do you regret that they didn't tell you back then that it's when not, you got your bell rung, you should stay off the field? It's not a question of regretting it. Yeah. They didn't know it either. No. So they just pushed us out there. What the problem is, is that they don't want to acknowledge it today. See, so, so if they would have known back then, who knows what they would have tried to do. Did you ever play after you'd had your bell rung? Oh, yeah, a lot of times. Yeah. A lot of times. Now, now they give you two or three games off. Here's what they used to do. Okay, how many fingers am I holding <laughs> up? <laughs> if you said four, you didn't go back in. Right. If you said three, you're going back in. Wow. Yeah, wow. Wow. it was crazy. And, and how about now? Are you, uh, are you fairly healthy? Well, aside from my wrist surgery that I had from my hurt in 1974, my shoulder surgery, yeah. my neck surgery, uh, my two elbow surgeries, and my knee surgery, I'm okay. <laughs> well, you know, I've often said uh, pro ball players, uh, it's like they're uh, in about 30,000 car crashes in their, in their life because most of you are prodigies. You right. start as a young player and right. you're g going through all that violence for all those years. Final question, mm. why are you uh, here with uh, Tony Fernandez? Just to help him out on this event, you know, it's a, it's a great event, it's a, for a great cause, and when you have guys that look to give back to their own communities, then in the sports realm, even though he played baseball and I played football and the guys play hockey, we're still in that same realm yeah. of being professionals. And uh, anytime we can do something to, to help these guys out, that's what we do.